Put a sheet of one millimeter thick thermal pad on the inner side of the heatsink. Since the heatsink has these ridges that form a boundary around the CPU sector, you can press down on them and the edges will show up on the thermal pad. Now you know how to cut the sheet. You want the thermal pad to cover the CPU sector, minus the CPU base plate and mounting legs. So feel around the edge of the base plate and press down on the edges. Now you know how to cut out the base plate area. You can poke around on the flip side to find the mounting legs. When you're done cutting, the inside of your heatsink should be covered like this. Now cover the GPU section. Here I'm using my thumb again to trim the edges of the thermal pad. Make a cutout for the GPU copper shim. There are some protrusions on the otherwise flat surface, so make sure you don't cover those. Remove the original thermal pads for the charging circuit and cover the whole charging circuit area with new thermal pad. Make sure the thermal pads don't cover any screw holes. Your heatsink should now look like this. Because the various components on the motherboard have different heights, we need to make cutouts for them so that we can put thermal pads of different thickness in those cutout areas. To locate the cutouts, just press the heatsink onto the motherboard so that the inductors, diodes, and so on can make imprints on the thermal pad. You can temporarily screw the heatsink back on to help you apply even pressure. When you take the heatsink back off, you should see a bunch of squares imprinted on the thermal pad. Trace them with a knife to cut them out. When you're cutting, you want to err on the side of cutting the squares too big instead of too small. Your heatsink should eventually look like this. Cut out 0.5 mm thick squares and put them inside the cutouts. Now your heat sink should look like this, but really you should use the photo on my website as the reference. Check how well the heatsink fits onto the motherboard now, and make sure no obstructions are jacking the heatsink up. For example, I realized I needed to cut out this corner. Now there's one thing we haven't done yet. The big inductor for charging and the little MOSFET surrounding it. Remember us peeling off their original thermal pads? It's time to give them new ones. Slap the heatsink on there one more time. These pads should stick and get picked up by the big blue pad. Cut out that section. And of course, put the pads for charging back. Put 0.5 mm thick thermal pad on the SSD's controller chip. Peel the insulation sheet off the heatsink. Reinstall the SSD. Use alcohol to clean the heatsink base plates and the CPU and GPU chips. Squeeze thermal paste about the size of a rice grain onto the chips. You can see that my paste is all messy because I had to check the heatsink multiple times. If that happens to you, don't bother cleaning off the paste every time. Just add some more on top and you're good to go. Put the motherboard screws back in. Don't forget the one hidden underneath the ribbon cable. Check that all the connectors are connected and reinstall the heatsink. If you don't remember where each screw goes, remember this. You should have gotten three sizes of screws from the heatsink. The biggest ones are for the base plates. The second smallest ones go into the holes marked with circles. The teeny tiny ones go into the holes marked with squares. So put back all the screws and continue to the next mod.